Today's consumers are increasingly wanting more than simple products. So does it mean that it's time for your functional CPG brand to deploy an ecosystem strategy? To set up what I'm talking about, I think it's important for me to just kind of discuss the main difference between functional CPG and conventional CPG. Now, conventional CPG, it really serves the lowest level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So these are the physiological needs, so what you need to sustain life, food, beverage, doesn't need to be anything particularly special, but it just needs to make sure that you're able to meet those physiological needs for life. Now, functional CPG, they tend to hit the higher Maslow hierarchy of needs. Now, just one step above safety needs, it does meet those in terms of just acquiring better health, but a lot of it comes down to the self-actualization needs where a consumer is trying to be the best version of themselves. They have all the other needs kind of met and they're looking to add those functional CPG products that are above and beyond conventional products to help them become the best version of themselves. Consumers definitely have a goal or an intent around these functional CPG products that they're purchasing, but there's kind of a problem that lies within the consumer brand relationship within the functional CPG industry. Now the consumer, like I mentioned, obviously knows what their end goal is in terms of these purchases. Be that they wanna lose 15 pounds, maybe they wanna lower their cholesterol or a number of other kind of goals. These consumers also know that there's a variety of different functional CPG products that are intended to help them reach that goal. The consumer though is left to really fill in all the gaps and reverse engineer a collection of products, services, maybe information that's going to be needed to get them to that end goal they wanna reach from where they are starting at today. This creates kind of a major issue with functional CPG brands. These products are not necessarily magic even though a lot of the marketing language might have consumers believing that they are. And if the product works as it is intended, it's never going to be the sole reason a consumer is going to reach their end goal. Now, consumers are definitely heavy handed with their attributional bias because they're going to point at the easiest thing to blame for why they're not reaching that end goal. Most of the time it's that functional CPG product. They're not necessarily going to think about maybe some of the larger, more complex wellness constructs. And if you wanna kind of look at what I'm describing, look at any of the top selling fat burners on Amazon, look at the reviews and just see how many people are blaming that product over maybe not changing their diet habits, their workout habits, or a number of other wellness routine constructs. So what do you get when all of this is combined? Functional CPG brands really should start to consider moving away from just offering those off the rack products without also attaching them to additional value creating ecosystems. I wanna explain a little bit around what an ecosystem strategy is. An ecosystem really implies systems thinking, which means that we must look at understanding the interdependent structures and participants in dynamic systems systems and their effects on one another over time. Ecosystem strategies can add value by enabling new product bundles, creating new customer solutions, and unlocking new platform economies. So why is it becoming increasingly important that functional CPG brands shift from traditional strategy over to an ecosystem strategy? Like I mentioned in the introduction, customers want more than just simple products. And the value that these consumers are looking for comes from experiencing use of a product 
that is tailored and personalized to their specific set of needs and preferences. Delivering such experiences often requires complex and integrated systems. Companies can no longer just satisfy the demands for these kinds of solutions and experiences by acting alone with just these off the rack products. To provide some additional color, just so you guys can see some application of ecosystem strategies in the market today, I did pull three kind of case studies and each of these use a little bit different of an ecosystem strategy. The first one is what I'm calling kind of like a niche technology ecosystem with a company called Proper Sleep. There's actually a funny story about this particular concept. When working on the initial discovery phase with a client, I actually spoke about extending their CBD product idea into a focused ecosystem around sleep. In my opinion, achieving a consistent, better sleep experience will never be possible with only a simple off the rack product. The idea wasn't ever explored further, but proper sleep must have been in my emails back then because they launched a very similar, I'll bet, more focused and refined concept a year later in 2020. Now Proper Sleep utilizes kind of a one-two punch of sleep supplements, which comes in various SKUs that also include CBD in them. And then more importantly, there's a sleep coaching element, which provides a personal sleep coach, which works with you to identify underlying causes of poor sleep health for sustainable improvements. They believe behavioral change leads to sustainable long-term sleep health. Now, as there's more market validation for this startup or they raise more external funding, I'd expect the company to extend into a more robust technology solution that also has integrations with things like wearables and they could enter into new partnerships or maybe even create their own private label versions of additional hard goods that would be associated with providing better sleep health. The second case study is around personalized nutrition and there's also a technology ecosystem but it is more mainstream. I could have named any of the dozens of companies working on personalized nutrition of which many of these are focused on getting closer to this idea of N1 through regular blood panels, DNA data, and a number of other data sources. But I wanted to look at this from a more mainstream ecosystem perspective that is looking at customer acquisition and how that big data pool can be utilized within large scale shifts of commercialization in the future. Since I just mentioned Nestle and their personalized nutrition ambitions in a previous video, if you guys haven't watched that video, I will We'll pop that one up for you guys right here. I thought this would be a good piece of content to expand on that a little bit more. Nestle owns a company called Persona. This is a subscription-based personalized vitamin business, which more than doubled its sales year over year in the first quarter of 2021. Nestle is also the largest food company in the world. They are one of the largest beverage companies in the world as well. Both of those segments within their business are going through a evolution in terms of the products and brands that are offered within them to make sure that they are meeting today's needs and really aligning themselves with health and wellness. After the Bountiful Company acquisition, Nestle will also be the largest vitamins, minerals, and supplements portfolio in the world. And they also have a good selection of compelling health science companies within their portfolio. And what Nestle really is building is kind of the opposite of what most of the market is. And most of the market is focused on the customer cohort that is really interested in optimizing their high performance lifestyle. So this is really the top of those Maslow hierarchy of needs towards the self-actualization. But Nestle's looking at this from a much bigger play and is focused on achieving more of those Maslow hierarchy of needs, the safety needs, right above the physiological needs. And they're saying, let's focus on the mainstream kind of sick part of the mainstream society that's looking to just get a little bit more healthy to live a better life. Nestle is really going to combine their assets that they have around personalized nutrition. So this is the food, beverage, and vitamins, minerals, and supplements. They're gonna attach this to some of their personalized medicine brands. And this is gonna be a huge long-term opportunity for Nestle. Now the third 
business case study that I want to kind of talk about is what I'm kind of calling the services ecosystem. And the company that I'm going to use as an example is Revive MD. Now the supplement industry, I lovingly call the sea of sameness, but every once in a while, a supplement brand will stand out above the crowd for one reason or another. Revive MD isn't your typical protein and pre-workout sports nutrition brand, but a premium positioned health-based wellness company with products that target mostly internal organs and hormone levels. The brand was the brainchild of respected health coach Matt Jansen and hormone specialist Dr. Dominic Icavone. Recently, the brand has evolved its strategy from traditional to ecosystem with the deeper integration of its Revive Health and Wellness medical locations that provide services that range from hormone optimization to stem cell therapy. They currently have more than a dozen locations from Florida all the way west to Texas. RevivemD customers also can receive free comprehensive blood work and medical consultation twice yearly. Now, as market validation happens or they go out and raise capital, I think outside of them just scaling out the franchised medical services side of their business, I think they're also going to look at deeper, more robust technology that could be supplementing their revenue through a subscription-based model that would also align within some of their like telemedicine services as well. I think all that can be tied up a lot closer and provide a ton of enterprise value for RevivemD. But with any kind of shifts, large-scale shifts of strategy, there could be some potential downside risk and I just want to kind of cover the most basic one and that's around just like focus or adding extra complexity to your business. As you are losing some of that focus of your business and you're adding complexity, that does have cost, real cost on the financial side, but also opportunity costs or resource costs or things that maybe don't really hit the financial statements as clear. When you are a focused company, you have a better understanding of where you should put those capital expenditures to really reinforce your core competencies. And as you build out some of these ecosystems, there is an element of testing that needs to be involved with you to really kind of unlock where the best market value is going to be. Any company that is embarking on a large strategic shift needs to remember that it's going to be a process and not necessarily this like finish line target project. There needs to be a constant level of learning. You need to be able to take the available feedback loops and create some like iterative innovation around what the market is telling you that they want the most. Ecosystem strategies that are most successful in the long run really build in adaptability and flexibility mechanisms that can adjust as Shifts happen in the market, maybe technology, maybe it is regulations or just overall public sentiment. It's just important to remember that if you are building these business ecosystems, while it's definitely a large undertaking, if you find one that's extremely well designed, it has the potential to create completely new industries or substantially shape and transform your existing industry. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.